here at Different Gravy. Hi, this is Donald calling from Different Gravy. And I wanted to say that Stamps.com delivers more stamps and more mail a lot faster and a lot better than than some of the other ones. You know what? With the post office, you see a lot of fraud happening with post office. So use promo code GRAVY to get 10% off your next order at Stamps.com. And that's not all. We'll also toss in a little scale so that you can scale out all of your stuff. You can use it for measuring spice mixes in the kitchen if you don't have a bunch of mail. Or you can cut up drugs on it if you like me and you like to crush up a bunch of drugs and snort them. So God bless you and God bless Sheffield Wednesday and your stupid podcast that 12 people listen to. Thanks for listening and good luck. Welcome to Different Gravy, not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm one of the hosts, Richard Miller, and my co-host wants to reassure anyone worried that his podcasting style is safety first, dour, or soul-destroying, that he really believes that Different Gravy is a historic sleeping giant of a podcast, and despite its current lowly state, is, in actual fact, Mahusive. The baseball cap wearing supplier of Route One Chit Chat, Dr. Luke Gledall. How are you doing today, Luke? <laughs> okay. Thank you. What <laughs> what more is there to say about me? Tell you what, Rich, I'll just not say anything for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Get to the point. It was it was a bit shit. All around. <laughs> like like every day, like every game this season. Like like twenty twenty. Yes. Like, however long it is until some <laughs> some vaccine or some respite or whatever happens. What I mean, if you could kind of speculate for a moment, what do you think a vaccine might look like for Sheffield Wednesday and their current plight? Just money, <laughs> lots and lots of money, <laughs> more money. Yes, <laughs> I think it's in hiring me to replace stuffing stuffing man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Why not? I mean, I it can't be. <laughs> It can't be any worse, can it, Rich? <laughs> I think that's what we said about Gary Monk going. I know. This is the, it, it, there's a, there's an element of be careful what you wish for, isn't there? What naive idiots we are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, aside from this um, this football club that we, mm. that we follow, how, how's have you? How are you? How are you in your in yourself? <laughs> Luke? I'm fine. Do you find yourself saying? Oh, it was a long week. And then you find yourself saying that about every week of this year. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. You know, it's one of us. How are you? I'm all right. I had a flu jab today, which is making me feel a little bit sort of sorry for myself and sore. Uh, but I didn't expect that to be the highlight of the day when it happened. But um, it's turning out to be that way. But there we go. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad there was one successful jab because, you know, we hey. see Wednesday not lay a single punch on many in opposition, so... Yeah, it's odd to see a boxer immediately go to that sort of heavyweight hugging <laughs> throughout a game, throughout a match. <laughs> it's normally normally saved for the for the latter rounds. Is it time uh, for us to uh, get into proceedings and uh, break proverbial hoo hoos? I think it could be breaking hoo hoos. So there's a couple of bits to sort of pick up. At. <laughs> Sorry, there's a real perilous stretch of uh, stretch of silence that just seems to be Rich and I just peering across the void there. Obviously, Rich will edit this to seamlessly take that out and seem that we're we're quick we're quicker quicker than some slow ponderous football that we've seen for so much of our podcasting careers. But uh, anyway, sorry, that really amused me. Carry on, Rich. Tell us tell us about tell us about the news in the world of Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, well, well, I think. Probably makes um, I can't quite figure where it lands chronologically. I pro- probably the bit of news I think we should tackle second came first, but I think it's worth talking about just whilst we're in this week that we're in uh, the change that the EFL clubs have voted for to have five substitutions available. Um, I just wondered what what your thoughts were on that. 
Oh, I think changing mm-hmm. rules mid-season is brilliant idea. I think it really upholds um, everything to do with integrity and a level playing field. I think it's great. Wonderful. It's interesting because the Premier League had the same option and said no. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is it is bizarre because it's. I, don't know, well, I feel you... like everybody's always uh, everybody in the Premier League is always bleating on about fixture congestion. Yeah, but the riches and the talent farms of the Premier League have said no to this. But I mean, the relative paupers in the EFL have uh, a gung ho for it and have uh, decided to to go ahead with it. I, uh, so we obviously had that last season after the restart to save everyone's you know precious energy levels, etc. It, we, I can't remember it ever being good for Auras, but I do remember game, there being games where it absolutely kicked us in the backside. <laughs> that the opposition had much better options on the. Effectively, it lets you put half of a new team on if mm. things aren't going well. The problem for Wednesday at this point in time is we barely have a first team, and often we're looking at the bench and seeing one bad option after like one every option weakens us in a different way there's nothing there that strengthens us generally <laughs> and then um i'm kind of trying to remember what the other game was and because preston did that to us i can't remember who the other team was was it qpr no qpr we absolutely battered that was one of the few good games in after the restart wasn't it, it but was. there was another, there was another game where the changes that they were able to make in the second half just it meant that we were kind of like treading water whilst they zoomed off into the distance and put several goals past us. Uh, mm. I'm slightly, my slight, I mean, so it feels like quite a significant change, as you say, to make part way through a season. It's a strange thing to just kind of happen upon. Mm. Uh, and I think that the thing that worries me more than the, the options available, because I guess you just got to, you're going to have to build your squad to make it to account for it now if if this is going to be the rules going forward but uh it's the fact that it breaks up the game so much because so many games during the kind of project restart period felt like bad international friendlies by the end because everybody yeah. had so many changes and it, the rhythm completely went the kind of pace of the game completely went and yeah, it just was so broken up, and I don't know. So I worry. I that mean, I more. I don't want to precursor and talk too much about the game ahead of time. But the the thing I I said to you over text when we were chatting about this, while we, you know, because you know it's really hard to keep our eyes off the game and uh, I definitely you know, distract didn't have ourselves, all, like staying awake, definitely. concentrating. You know, you <laughs> told me you got a stiff drink beforehand, and I asked if it was bleach or spiked Kool Aid. <laughs> so. It probably gives an idea of how things went, as is people <laughs> people probably know by now. Yes. Um, so, but I was saying that like Monk would have loved to have five substitutions all the time. He can't wait to make a bunch of substitutions. I mean, we could have had a situation where all five strikers are on the pitch. Really? Yeah. That would have been something. And we, they'd all be in our box defending. Probably. Probably. <laughs> John Rhodes would probably be like out leaping, <laughs> out leaping Tom Lee's. Yes, uh, yes. Had one clear, but the best thing is in the Wednesday shirt outside of a perfect hat trick at Nottingham. Um, but I, you know, Pulis, I don't think he's a big fan of such a thing. It's interesting. It was interesting how long he spent with each of his substitutes today as well before he brought them on. Mm. It felt like P- Pelle Pessi was there for about 15 minutes. Yes. Whatever warming up he'd done had well and truly gone by the time he actually got on the pitch. Warming up his mentality. <laughs> With some words yeah. in his ear, yeah. perhaps. But I, I don't know, and I, I, if this may be a grossly, grossly unfair thing to say, but frankly, I don't really care. I'm just going to say it anyway. I feel like uh, Pulis would kind of reject five subs because, like, he's part of some kind of Amish cult, and that would be seen as too, too modern. You know, <laughs> I mean, it is ridiculous. I want to say. I mean, I, I don't like the idea of saying we want to change the rules mid, mid season because we've already seen. We've already seen what playing this with three substitutes within such a congested season beforehand yeah. has done. And it would have helped. I feel like it actually, I don't know, maybe it would have helped Wednesday. Maybe it wouldn't have helped Wednesday. I feel there are times we could have made more, you know, another substitution that would have changed things. I don't, I, I don't think I'm like, like 
I think having a substitution, I, I suppose it would get abused, but I think having a substitution that's available in an emergency or something along those lines, I'm not necessarily against that. I just, it's this, it feels like two, in a team of 11, to be able to change almost half of them just feels, I, I worry it's going to get like American sports where you kind of have an attacking team and a defense team. And some sometimes that's exciting. Some American, I'm not one of these people that dismisses all American sports. I quite enjoy American football um, at times. Um, but like ice hockey has this, and um, I, I've, I've weirdly watched a, a professional lacrosse game or two as well, and they have the same thing. Where it's like the opposition gets the ball, so the goalkeeper gets the ball because the other team's done the attack, and they kind of hang around and wait for the other team to change all their players before they can it like kills the rhythm of the game because they're having to wait for the other team to change all their oh all the attacking players need to come off and all the defensive players now need to come on but mm. I, I can see teams I can see people like people of that kind of Mourinho kill the game sort of mindset you could just start out with an incredibly attacking 11 and then get 2-0 up at half time and then make five subs that just completely kill the game dead I do, I just and like time them so that you kill the rhythm of the game as well I just feel like I I suppose you can go the other way and you could make exciting changes and that will happen at times but it just feels like it's too much it's too many changes uh it's yeah it's a strange one anyway and five uh, does that mean you can we name more people on the bench or is it five out of seven subs well we had eight people on the bench didn't we right okay i, d- I don't know what the uh, i'm really curious now what the maximum no we had nine forgive me right so it's not it's just nine so, yeah, so it five, goes from nine. seven to nine wow I, I suppose to argue the count you know against ourselves here mm. maybe it means more opportunities for young players i don't i mean i don't know but potentially to fill those benches, you've got to put some young yeah, players. Yeah, I could probably get them more game time. It was a difficult situation today because of the early red card, but yeah. I didn't think. Yeah, I, I just, I don't think. Uh, well, Chris Wilder doesn't seem to be a fan of it, I think. Right. I don't know, I haven't popped around and seen everybody's opinions. I just saw that kind of pop up on my feet that he wasn't a fan. Well, that's, so he, he's, I think he has been vocal about it, and I, I think there's a couple of the other, like lower down the Premier League table, teams have said, you know, this favours the big boys to, to, you know, to the point where it kind of distorts the competition. I just, I don't know why so many EFL teams have gone for it, but there we go. Mm. Maybe it speaks to the fact that in the Premier League, most teams have a fairly realistic view of where they stand in the pecking order, um, like outside of the big four or big six, however many you put, the rest know that they are, you know, they're very lucky if they get anything above precisely where they, you know, precisely where they stand. Not, They're never going to make it into the top four. Mm-hmm. Whereas I guess the championship, and maybe this goes for the, the other leagues as well, the championship is full of teams that think they should be winning it when only one of them can and only three of them can get promoted, which is where all the money pro- troubles come from. So it's almost like that American thing of the, you know, the American people don't see themselves as poor. They see themselves as sort of temporarily embarrassed. Embarrassed billionaires. Yeah. Um, and may- maybe that that goes for the EFL. There's so many clubs like Wednesday who are, you know, quote unquote massive, but just waiting for the moment. I mean, we've been massive and the sleeping giant for 20 years. We're not the only ones in that sort of position. Uh, most, a lot of, I'm sure almost every EFL club thinks they're bigger than they are to some extent. Mm. Intr- yeah, anyway, it's int- I, I find it intriguing because it got quite a, a lot of support. It was pr- pretty much massive, like overwhelming support for, for making the change in, in the EFL when it was narrowly beaten in the Premier League. Uh, so the other the other bit of news, we, we talked about it last week when we, uh, we so excitedly welcomed... Tony Pulis to the club we we were sort of lamenting the fact we hadn't had a chance to hear from him in a press conference we had the we had the big Pulis presser were you blown away <laughs> on a scale of you know completely to desk, desktop fan how blown away were you Luke 
Um, very much the desktop fan, the cheap one uh-huh. you buy from Wish.com. That comes that you, you know, you plug into your USB and uh, miraculously doesn't manage to melt your computer in the process. You weren't lifted from where you were seated and placed down somewhere else. No, it wasn't like it was kind uh-huh. of like that. Um, was it the Michael Jackson video where John Goodman <laughs> plays a dad and then he's blown away from the sound in the TV in his chair or something? It wasn't like that, or he's blown up out of the. <laughs> That's it. Macaulay Culkin plays a guitar and it like projects him out the. It wasn't like that. No. No. Uh... It wasn't Dolby Surround. You know. <laughs> what did you? I mean, what, what? What if anything did you take away from it? I think I was slightly more. I wasn't starting from a particularly high point on this, but it, it made me slightly more on board with things. I think. I get that. I, I so I had a little bit of that. It's just not much whelm. I mean, it's it's kind of a bit yeah. like Roms. I felt the mentality was, oh, well, that was a good press conference, and I felt like the mentality is a little bit like, yeah, you know, he should be good at that. He's done a lot of them in his day, you know. <laughs> the thing that I thought was nice was, you know, they put the press conference out unedited in this world. Uh, the thing that I think I've heard other people say. Heard us on Al's America, so they were mentioning this. Like it, it was nice his kind of respect and deference to the journalists. Yeah, you know the fact that he addressed them. You know, he knew their names and he remembered their names and had a bit of. You know, you you couldn't tell sometimes whether were, these people were new to him or people he knew before. Yeah, you know, and that was that was kind of nice. Um, we obviously had like a little bit of complete nonsense where he starts talking about his love for history. Um, do you see the bit with, was it the Sun journalist or one of the tabloid journalists where there's, there's, there's a fairly kind of young, kind of late twenties chap. It was like, okay. what, are the, what are the, what are the beams in your house there? <laughs> I was getting into the kind of Edwardian structure or whatever it was, the uh, place he was in. That was nice. You know, I, he's a, he's, he's, you know, he's going to be very professional in what he does. I don't ever besmirch him of doing that. And don't think he was going to be someone who would be bad at press conferences. We needed that uh, for the sake of, we needed that soon. I'd said, I, I would yeah. have thought we genuinely would have needed that kind of on the Saturday when he was announced, I would have said. Yeah. Friday night. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Logistics so- timing. I don't know. I did, you know, then he obviously came out and said why, you know, basically made a claim, which we found put true is like basically why, you know, if you, if you're a club with Kieran Westwood, you should be playing him really. Mm. You thought it was interesting what he said about Patterson as well. I did. Uh, I mean, particularly when we don't really have other options right now. <laughs> so no, no, I didn't like hearing that for the sake of a bit like you're coming into a club I mean, granted, you've probably got, granted, you've got a, just over a month for the January transfer window. I'm pretty certain, I feel like a lot of people have said this, like, Pulis will buy another target man, you know, yeah. that is top of the shopping list. Um, don't Which, think we, maybe another uh, defender, maybe another, def- I feel like we'd maybe do another defender or something. I think that's probably it. Or maybe a hard man in the middle of the park. I think two of those three, but definitely, a, you know, definitely a big striker. If we get all three of those, that's what we needed in the summer. It's what we needed every summer for the last five yeah. years. Yeah. Um, I d- yeah, it's interesting. I know what you mean that, you know, he's he's been around the, the you know, he's been around the block a fair few times. He, he knows what he's doing. Um, see, by the end, I was kind of, I was over the monk earnest shtick. Uh, it just stopped ringing true for me. So mm-hmm. I don't know. So having a just a kind of a bit more of a, for want of a better word, just a sort of old school manager type approach. I, I, to me, f- felt like a bit of a welcome change. But I can't. I'm under no illusions that this is not going to be. <laughs> the football is not going to be good. There's no two ways about it. You know. Um, it's just whether we can be. I'm, I'm, I'm on board for being effective because we've not been effective mm. for you know three of the last or yeah, sort of three seasons out of the last four. We've been very ineffective. So you know, I, I, at this point, I would snatch your hand off for some for being efficient and effective. So if if he can actually produce that, bear in mind he's the third manager out of four that was supposed to bring. <laughs> A, a, you know, a strong defence and uh, 
a kind of efficient style of play. Uh, we've been sold a dummy twice on that front. So whether if he can produce that, then I, I'm, I'm kind of I'm there for it to an extent. Um, wh- what about the other bits and pieces? So I think like the fact that he's brought we've already got movement in terms of the staff he's brought in. Um, we've got now got a new assistant manager who's spent his time being the, the chief scout for Celtic in Europe in recent years. Um, mm. We've brought in Gardner, um, a young, you know, a young coach looking to sort of earn his stripes. Do any of that sort of moving you in a positive direction or st- still, you're still sort of waiting to see, you know, waiting to be, blown away by actual real things on the pitch i think so i i don't know i've always been i i felt like i've seen a lot previously of oh you know this person's this and i also realized that you know i thought like james Beatty's coaching yes. appearance would would somehow be an, an alchemist for you know some very terrible football players up front <laughs> and that didn't happen yeah yeah although i mean yeah he didn't have much time but yes yeah. Um, do you do you want to move on to today's game? Yes. Yes, I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> Just lap it up. <clears throat> Ooh, extra extra relish. Thank you. Uh, so lineup wise, Tony Pulis, he's on un- unearthed this young scamp of a goalkeeper, mm. Kyron Westweed. I don't know how to say his name, Kiron Westwood. <laughs> um, but he's. He's, you know, he's not just spent time with the first team. He's looked at the under 23s. He's seen who's that guy training on his own in the corner, doing keep ups <laughs> against the wall, and uh, he's brought him in from the cold. <laughs> mm. I liken him to, um, you know, you watch one of those teen films, and there's the uh, there's the awful, really ugly, geeky girl, and then uh, <laughs> then suddenly she takes her glasses off and lets the pin out of her hair and. Oh my god, oh, she's, she's she's an international she's, goalkeeper for not for Republic of Ireland. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> uh, so we also we also saw the return uh from various suspensions and injuries of uh Tom Lees, Luongo and Patterson was back in the side having been sort of said told by his manager he doesn't like him in the role that he what well, he is here to play. Uh, he was asked to play it again. Um, so kind of the game is tr- it's tricky to analyse and, and and draw lots out of because obviously there's a huge incident happens 15 minutes in or so and that nothing after that is <laughs> you. It's all you know casts a shadow after everything absolutely everything else that happens. Um, but it looked like we set up as a with four at the back. Uh, so that's a that's a sort of mm. reversion to that with Van Aken as a makeshift left back, um, and then kind of Luongo. So kind of like when we when we were out of possession, four one four one with Patterson being part of that midfield and Windass kind of being up front on his own, and Luongo dropping in between the midfield and the defence. Um, when we had the ball. Patson pushed up alongside Windass and Luongo pushed up into the midfield, so it was much more like a four-four-two. Um, but we didn't get, as we say, we didn't get to see that much of it. I actually thought Windass was looking pretty bright early on. <laughs> he sort of nicked the ball off um, off one of their off, off their defenders a couple of times and um, chased down a lost cause and won a corner where Reach maybe should have got a, got an effort on target from that sort of ten minutes in. Did you find it interesting? <laughs> the set pieces, having watched the video analysing the Pulis set piece, we sort of did that already, interestingly. So the the, the video sort of analysing what he likes to do with set pieces is he will have one or two of the guys that you would expect to go and win the header charge to the front post when the ball is in the air, mm. but they're actually running under the ball and what you're doing is creating space at the far post. And that gave a chance to reach. Uh, very early on that he absolutely should have hit the target with. And it also gave a chance to Moses Odebadjo, uh where he, mm-hmm. he sh- should have done the same thing. Um, so that it's not that there weren't things you could notice, but I think it was remarkable just how samey it felt. Did you feel the same? It felt, felt, it felt worse. different. I, I think it was worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I, I put that, um, 
Preston had replaced the pale and gangly Jaden Stockley, who absolutely ruined us last time out, with the paler and ganglier Danish international Reese. Mm. Uh, I've got a comment about Reese. I'm glad you brought him up. Emil Reese of Preston looks like Bez on some downers of playing for a Lancashire football club. <laughs> and stretched. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 17 minutes, this is the big pivotal incident of the game. High boot from Windass and uh, an immediate sending off which what what did you make of the the incident I, i'm quite conflicted um you know initially i missed it so i had to watch it back on the highlights which took a while to come back round. Mm. <clears throat> um I, I thought it was it was a little bit strange but i genuinely can see why it's been given but i, I guess the interesting thing so the balls come over <clears throat> i'm just going to jfk this a little bit um windass has gone to try and get i mean he, he said afterwards i was just looking through um when we we're recording this pulis has finally come out and done a bit of a press conference mm. at the end of this said that windass said that he tried to flick it over for for reach and i can see why he's done that so he's gone up for the ball he's done that for the ball but then he's also been quite late and yeah. there hasn't really been the thing that i don't think you can defend windass for in this situation is there's no effort to retract his boot after he's missed and he's gone with the ball. It, it feels, and maybe yeah. it's damning with the replay, probably in the heat of the moment from what the referee has seen. And also with, from the replay in slow motion, it feels like his boot just hangs in the air, high in the air for an eternity. And then it makes contact with the Preston player. Was it Rafferty? I think who went for it. It was Rafferty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah kind of went ahead the ball so it, I just it think... feels it feels a little bit engineered i want to say but i don't think you can really defend when that's leaving his boot so high in the air i just i just think you can't put your foot that high up in the in the like they're basically on the halfway line like you're right in the mix of things and mm. I, I also feel like Windass must have been able to... I know you get a bit of t- tunnel vision and his uh, eyes are on the ball, but you've got to see that there's a full-grown man like immediately behind that ball. You can't... He, you know, he's not that sort of myopic, surely. I just thought... I just thought it's just another stupid red card to... Uh, mm. It's unbelievable how we're racking them up. Last season, it felt like we spent the whole time talking about giving silly fouls away on the edge of the box. This season is... We are just racking up red cards like they're I going know. out of fashion. I, I, th- it's, I, I don't... I haven't sort of verified this fact, but I saw somebody on Twitter talk about f- we've had four in the last six games, which mm. seems unbelievable, but it's also very believable. I think that's probably the right number. And... Yeah. It, for violent conduct as well, so we're and missing it's a free a match big game. Yeah. yeah, we simply don't have the squad to take that kind of indiscipline. <laughs> well, like, so I don't know. I I don't think I've seen enough. I I don't go back and see grotty incidents of red cards. You know, in a compilation, I don't know if anyone really takes any great pleasure seeing kind of like a Vinnie Jones approach to the game. But I think the thing is, a lot of the high boots is they're not really that. It did. It, it, it didn't seem intentional from Windows. But, I mean, it's. it's I know. Stupid you know, to leave I know your... what you're saying. So interestingly, interestingly, the I was on the Preston commentary speaking about Grot. Um, <laughs> I was on the. I had the Preston commentary, and they, the 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 sort of co-commentator, the the, the player, you know, the ex-pro, yeah. uh, was very much of the opinion that it was really harsh and a ridiculous red card but i for me every time i watched it i I thought in real time it looked bad and i thought like so many things on replay it looked worse on the replay i I know what you're saying because he's not he's not like chinned him he's not like gone with a full fully Mm. like extended leg and but he's not he's not far off he got Mm. his studs right in his chest and i just i just think you've got to be you're in charge of your body and your limbs and what they do. And in, in a crowded, in the middle of the pitch like that, mm-hmm. it's, you're just, you're asking for trouble. Uh, I, 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 I think, I know what you're saying about being engineered as well. Um, I don't think that the player played for it too much. I mean, he sort of held his, 
face, which is kind of unfortunately now par for the course with these sort of incidents. Yeah. But I don't think I don't think the player sort of threw saw that Windass's leg was coming up and threw himself at it. I think it's cowardly from Windass because he should go with his head as well. That's the the yes you know, quote unquote safe way to go for the ball. Yes. Yeah. But you're putting yourself at risk. And what he did was put all the risk onto the opposing player and give mm. the referee a, a huge opportunity to ruin the game for us, basically. And I, I, he, he's got to take responsibility for it, really. I, I, I'm sure he didn't mean to do it. I don't think he's that sort of player. But he does have play with an edge. It's not a massive yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, he's started started a fight walking off the pitch two weeks ago so you know he's he's a guy with a bit of a temper mm. um anyway so yeah obviously that's a huge pivotal incident and for new manager make you know making his start a nightmare um scenario because really you immediately move into well what's the best that we can do out of this game uh whatever plans that we'd worked on as you say, it hadn't really got going. We hadn't done anything to that point very much in the game. Well, what what we might have planned for later never got a chance to come to fruition. Um, I, I haven't taken many notes because I thought, interestingly, we, we did quite well controlling Preston by and large. They had a couple of set pieces, but they didn't. They looked pretty toothless first half, mm. apart from. <laughs> <coughs> The incident on the 38th minute where I have no idea how Palmer didn't give a penalty away. Really, I didn't. I don't seem to remember that. Sinclair absolutely did him, ran into the box and Palmer was running backwards as fast as he could. Sinclair sort of went out, went inside of him and then cut back onto his left foot and Palmer tackled him in the space where like, the ball was about a foot to, the, to Palmer's right. And he ta- he tackled Sinclair, uh, <laughs> who was in the position where he'd like dummied to go to go right. That um, it, it looked it looked a stonewall penalty to me. Mm. Anyway, um, Palmer he was sort of then held his foot like he'd been the injured party, which uh, which is good, you know, good pro stuff. You got to do that. But uh, I'm amazed that the ref didn't give it. And the ref had a very good view as well. Anything from from you for sort of from that 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 spell or from from the first half? I just said drawing feels like losing and maybe that's life under 10 men. And then further, maybe that's life under 10 men watching Wednesday. Um, I felt we, we, we did get a couple of half chances completely mm. out of nowhere. I, I am going to give a, a positive here, which I think needs to be said in a very kind of dour game and maybe compared against some of the previous stuff, which I think is kind of conflicting. So, I, I think under Gary Monk, we we had a lot more better build-up play. It didn't really... We never really did a great deal in the final third, but kind of getting there, I think we had some interesting kind of play. I think there was some niceness there, which I don't think we had. Um, kind of under... We've only had one game of Tony Pulis to look at, so I can't yeah. be too... I can't be too um, finalized about things, but I, unfortunately, what we're kind of seeing is what we kind of expect and what we've seen previously on the kind of Tony Pulis. The, the positive I want to say was we got a couple of half chances out of nowhere. It It's nice to see that when we go on the counter, we do actually have some real pace and zip in our play. I felt yes. like we just held everything up. We looked like we'd have a promising moment on the Monk and then we'd just hold the ball up and lose all of that momentum completely. Yeah. But there seems to be a bit of really going for it. The problem is I just don't think we have the players with the conviction and the quality to really do something really dangerous. But it was staggering to see was going forward with some real pace today. Yeah, I suppose that reversion to a kind of more standard formation mm. means that you've got pacey players in the right positions. Mm. You know, the wide players are coming from inside the opposition's half rather than having to start all the way, you know, in our own half because Mm-hmm. They're having to defend first, so that it, yeah, it does make a it does make a big difference. I mean, that was probably one of the highlight chances. Really, was um, the ball was kind of punted forward. Uh, Patterson did this, flicked it on. Uh, it was kind of a karate kick. <laughs> yeah. You know, chop, chopped it with his leg forward, forward ten fifteen yards for for Massimo to run onto. Yeah. You know, he picked it up with some real pace, and then kind of cut back in, came in, and then I I think that was. 
I mean, he did a lot in that situation, but it was a bit of a disappointing finish. Yeah. To put, put that one into the side netting, and that was really, for the first half, that was pretty much all it was, apart from the chance you mentioned at the 9-10 minute mark, you know, uh, yeah, the, the reach, really good high flowed corner from Bannon, and then Reach running onto it and needs to at least get on target, you know, in that situation. Yeah. I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you saw marked differences in the period of time. I, I suppose, I, as I say, I sort of had written off, I, wrote, I sort of wrote everything off after the mm. sending off. But to me, it just felt very, very similar to Life Under Monk. And that's not a good thing. Well, I, um, well, I think that we... I think we added more players to the mix going forward. Maybe, maybe that's Under right. Monk. Yeah, I think there was more build up in the in the second half in the opposition half to kind of work the ball around and try and work it into some. It always felt like we were trying to work it to some situation that never came to yeah. some situation that was never ever going to be dangerous. And this was just a bit like foot to the floor, get at it, get it forward, very yeah. functional. And also, when you're in that situation, do something very do. Do something very attacking with it, so it, it feels like it has a bit more tooth there. Yeah. I also think we have a lot more. We had a lot more solidity this game than I've I, seen. I other. would agree with that. Yeah. Um, well, particularly as I say, that first half when you would have expected us to be absolutely like rocking, mm. reeling. Um, we really, we really didn't. We weren't giving up chances very often today at all. Um, I, I, I had I, a, I had an interchange with my el- eldest brother where I think it was. Pearson made the comment from one of the the many many Preston corners. Also, can we just say about the referee? Uh, this is the first time I've seen a referee um, even things out on corners. Right. <laughs> Do you remember that there was like a chat? There was like a Preston corner where it was it was genuinely going to be a Preston corner, and for some reason he gave a goal kick, and then is he that, made. That was the he one where he point, is that the one where he pointed at the corner and then swung his arm round to the goal. <laughs> Like it was a big flamboyant gesture. It was a yeah, that was a weird one. I don't remember. I've never seen a referee from corners. <laughs> to be honest, I thought that was ridiculous, and I got really worried because it it seemed like that was that was the only thing that Preston were going to do was from yeah. a corner. Anyway, Pearson was remarking from a corner that oh look, Wednesday are marking space, and I suddenly got very very nervous. <laughs> I texted my oldest brother Andy. He's like saying, "How is this?" He chose not to. Spend right. his uh, spend his spend his books on an I follow pa- match pass for today, mm-hmm. um, preferring some German football instead. Which I was like, yeah, fair enough. And mm-hmm. I said, you know, Wednesday in marking space. He's like, I approve. And my eldest brother oh, is a go. bit of a bit of an amateur tactician. Yes. Um, and I was like, um, I I don't know. I want you to kind of um, be cautious <laughs> with that statement until you've seen Wednesday do it. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think any Wednesday marking is just... So you've seen it in the hands of... I've, I've seen so much bad Wednesday marking, especially over wasn't having much mixture, more of though, folks, because we, really, we certainly, you know, It wasn't purely space marking, though, because we, we went man for man with some of their players. It wasn't... Um, mm-hmm. It was more of a kind of hybrid, I think. But, uh, yeah, an interesting observation. Um, they, they were... They're a big side. Oh, yeah. Preston. Oh, yeah. Those two centre backs are whoppers, and I can't remember who the other guy. <laughs> yeah, Potts. Potts was massive, um, and so was uh, yeah, so was the, the the big Danish kid, um, and then obviously they they brought on Stockley second half. Yeah, absolutely they're, huge. They're whoppers unit. while we just have uh, McDonald's single single hamburgers. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Yeah, we can't even stretch to the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just in, in, in with the with the sort of differences. I suppose it's um, we're, we're looking out for them, paying attention to them, and we've got to be yeah. wary, of, wary of the Pulisibo effect. Um, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so Preston made two changes at half time, obviously mm. sort of showing that they were one not afraid, mm. uh, not afraid of us at and, all. Um, and I just uh, have a upset. break here, Rich, and just oh, yeah. mention some other notes. I had some kind of half time musings. Okay. I, I want to say as well, there's a brutal pugilism to proceedings. That yes. was something I've noted. Um, 
A couple of things I'd noted from half time. First of all, I'll just get this kind of small one out of the way. Seeing the FIFA 21 advert and the promise of this is football. I would love to see the Tony Pulis FIFA adverts. Balls hurtling like shooting stars leaving the ozone layer and coming back entering the ozone layer again. Players niggling each other. Uh, the players of the computer game and their friends watching from behind them get excited and rise up to see a corner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I felt a lot about how, how this really compares and um i'm gonna say monk felt like a jazz icon compared to uh, what we're seeing on the pulis um felonious monk like a felon a man who dabbled in the kitchen and his attempts to roast a series of expensive ingredients in new creative ways led to them all be burnt in predictable ways and somehow he's managed to teleport some poo into the middle of a dish itself <laughs> And, you know, I've seen a lot of Food Network and uh, I've never seen Bobby play Griller to, to perfection. Um, <laughs> it feels like Pulis is your dad after a divorce, just serving up beans on toast every week with the Asda Smart Price ingredients. Solid but very unspectacular and making you start to resent beans on toast. I miss mom, dad, <laughs> you say to Tony Pulis, meekly uttering <laughs> some words in a moment of secretly connection with your pragmatic and stoic father. Tony <laughs> replies, get that food into your fucking stomach now. <laughs> sustenance at the speed of light <laughs> very good if it has any taste it's not my fault <laughs> uh, well that was very good um, <laughs> so well we were yeah, so as I said Preston made these changes at half time um, Palmer was still doing the wrong sort of defending against Sinclair um just backing himself into the box and giving all the options to Sinclair every time that he uh, he stood it stood him up, um, but then yeah, once so the next sort of pivotal incident in the game, forty eighth minute. Mm -hmm. It's a good job we got rid of those stupid keepers that were like giving away chances and got Westwood back. Isn't I it? know, I we, know those silly kids. And they make mistakes. And what the real answer is, is to get Westwood back. Oh, it's a disgrace that he's not playing. And then, lo and behold, look, he's just as bad. He's just as bad, but 35. There's no excuse for it other than he's broken and old. <laughs> I kind of felt that what I thought might happen was, because he's sort of well-rested, I thought Westwood would be good enough Probably like good enough to hold off the fact that we should get a goalkeeper in January, mm. uh, but I don't know. That sort of remains to be seen because he had nothing to do today and he <clears> messed <throat> it up. That was uh, yeah. So, so ch being yeah. charitable, he slipped maybe, but it was they a really weird contact. He could have caught it. They seem to say on the Wednesday commentary I had, John Pearson seemed to give him maybe that generous little little boost. Yeah, yeah. A little, little leg up on his uh, his alley oop, you know. Um, you know, as as I from my notes, I said we barely got started the second half. You know, Rich and I, we we barely came back from our. We're trying to uh, in this abject world, gravy industries are getting into the VR game. So Rich and I have been doing a VR concession stand <laughs> where we go down and uh, you know we wait in a queue for a pint and a pint and a pie. <laughs> And uh, and then we had a tinkle as well. So you know, we we barely came back to the stand when uh, you know Westwood comes back to remind me of a slightly better Dawson to give a far more impressive volleyball assist of a beach dig, which I also think is I've looked up and apparently it's known as a deep dish, which oh. was probably the most appetizing thing that was served up all day. <laughs> um, straight out to an impressive volley from Barkusen to whack oh, it in. Oh, he gobbled it up. Barkusen was uh, he was ready for that deep dish. Mm. Mm. Put his yeah. Papa John's foot through that one. <laughs> it's the quality of the ingredients, and that's getting both fists on your uh, punch out to the penalty spot. Uh, plus, then not reacting at all to the shot that comes in. Uh, it's real good stuff. What would a pizza made by Westwood, a man who's from Manchester, but, you know, represents, uh, has had, you know, grandparents and probably had a sip of guinness as well yes. um to represent ireland what would what would a pizza that he prepared uh what what would it what would it include rich oh westwood pizza some lancashire cheddar <laughs> clover, clover leaves i don't know 
I don't think I'd want to eat some, it. Some scalloped potatoes, perhaps? <laughs> Maybe, yes. Just to keep things nice and uh, stereotyped. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's a disappointment. Once again, it's uh, an individual error. Um, the defence had been solid, and the, I would say less so than most games this season. There was no pressure, really, on the goalkeeper at any stage during this game. But he managed to make a pressured situation himself um from a very routine he could have caught that uh and if you choose to punch it you've got to punch it properly there's just it doesn't matter who's in goal that's the that's it isn't it really yeah (laughs) uh and it may it means we're not only now 10 men away from home whatever that matters uh we're 10 men who are now a goal down away from home um we had probably our only good chance or our best chance i think of the half on about the 57 seven minute mark that yes. was the long throw yeah. that went to Adebayo at the back post who kind of cut it back across the goalkeeper but but uh, missed unfortunately oh, aiming aiming for the corner flag what did you think of Adebayo the winger he was okay i mean i i i think it speaks to when we're missing Harris, I guess, I guess that's maybe one of the better options. Mm. Maybe. I, I don't really know who else we can really put there outside of reach. So this, I mean, it's this... the thing with Odebarjo. He's got a lot of pace to burn, you know, and has, you know, has a lot of tenacity and pace. And yeah, all that, all that jazz acceleration, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in, the, in the bonnet for the, you know, for his motor. But <laughs> I don't, there's no end product, is there? He's not going to no, do a no. cross. He can't shoot for Toffee, as we found out today, as we found out numerous times. So I, I don't know. It's just a pacey player on the wing, really. It's, yes. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the... After after win, This is the problem with Wednesday. After we lose a man, there's just no hope of having any shape no. or identity. No. Maybe that's a good thing that now under Pulis, like we, we looked a lot more solid even under 10 men. I was going to say... I wonder how much he was part of that other badge because I think he, despite being nominally a winger today, he spent a lot of time in fullback positions. I think helping out, um, and mainly he he'd moved across. That was that was an odd switch. So when when we went down to ten men, we started off with Reach on the left and other badge on the right, and then when we when we went when we lost um, Windass, we swapped those two over. Um, I don't know what necessarily what the thinking was behind that, but it 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 meant that Odebajo was very much working in tandem with Van Aken, and and Reach mm. was kind of running around all over the place again, which seems to be a bit of a default setting for him at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to uh, we need to uh, raise up, lift up um, Adam Reach's shirt at the back. Just at his lower back, and then flick the switch from default to uh, concerted running. <laughs> That's the problem. This out of reach is set to uh, set to free roaming. Free roaming, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, we then made the first of our substitutions, and I suppose <laughs> I, I didn't know what because Pelupesi was stood there for so long. We didn't know who he was going to come on for. Yeah, and I was just thinking like, there's no. <laughs> There's no good answer in terms of who no. he comes on for. No. Um, I suppose Luongo is maybe the best of the answers because it it's like for like in a way, um, although it's very much not like for like uh, in terms of quality. But they're they were nominally playing the same position um, and looking after Luongo. The more football Luongo can play, the better Sheffield Wednesday will will be as a team. So. I think looking after him, treating him with kick gloves. I think we've rushed him back previously. We've yeah caused problems with him. So giving him an hour, you could say that today was a bit of a lost cause. You know, we're down to ten men. We're a goal down. Mm. Why force him through more minutes than he needs to? Let's let's you know pat him on the back for an hour, well played, and hope that he can do it again against Swansea. So I think it makes sense in terms of managing Luongo and his energy. It doesn't do anything for the team. It it just makes us weaker um, and 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 takes away some of our dynamism. That's that's unfortunately where we're at in terms of those midfield options. I, as we know, this you know this is benefit of the hindsight. Um, the podcast. Um, would you have gone for Brown in that situation just to kind of 
the game's kind of lost already. Let's see if we can do anything. Or do you think that would have been too too attacking? I, I think I I don't know what I would have done to be honest. I'm so I feel like I've had answers before. I feel like I've had you know a prognosis for what I would do in this situation. I'm, I'm kind of resigned to any kind of concept of ideas. I don't think Pulis would have done that, which is why obviously he made the substitutions he did make. Mm. Um, that was the weird thing because I, I I typically think it it feels still feels more positive from Monk under those times because I felt it was a bit like we'll change it because we're trying to change the outcome of the game. It was disappointing to see the first substitution be like, oh, it's just a like for like. It's just replacing legs. But then I suppose that's the thing. We talked about how we were pretty much unworried by Preston. We weren't, it wasn't the heart and mouth stuff. I, I think I think if we'd been in this position under Monk, we probably would have lost 3 0. We probably would have. But I suppose, yeah, then it's a kind of question of taste as a fan. Would you prefer to lose three nil and kind of had a go at it, or because I, I, I mean we would have we would have never have lost three nil against um, Brotherham on the Pulis. No, but I think that kind of pragmatism of of Pulis. I think looking at the game, you're probably watching it, and particularly you know the 60th minute. There's still quite a lot of football left to play, so you're not really in like because we did we did make a positive change later on. Rhodes for Odebadjo is quite a quite a positive move to make, in a way. <laughs> if it wasn't Jordan Rhodes, if if I told you we brought on a striker for a wing for a midfielder, you'd say, Oh, that's a positive move. So we kind of made that move later on. We did, I know. But I I, I could just see I could see the thinking behind going, well, this is going all right and from a set piece maybe we'll be able to do something. Yeah. Unfortunately, today, like so many days, Bannon's set pieces were absolutely honking. Awful. Weren't they? It's hilarious we brought up. Like, the first one was so good. Um, <laughs> everything else from there was just so poor. Oh, when he rolled it so, to the front post for that one. That yeah. Was just, what, yeah. What was even the plan? <laughs> if that he, did, he did have one bad free kick as well. I mean, the corners are the worst. Corners yeah. are just... I don't... I've. I don't know why we're persisting with Bannon with corners. I mean, well, near the end, you know, Brown comes on. Brown takes a corner. It was okay. It was okay. But that's still miles, miles, streets and leagues ahead of what we've seen from Bannon on a regular basis. And this is, is the frustrating it, is thing. It's like, this is, this is the only thing that we need Bannon for. I, I, we need Bannon for a quality delivery, a quality set piece. He's not, he's not doing it. No, he isn't. Do you think he takes them all because he's captain? Or do you think he's told to take them off? I don't know where the break in that is. I, I, also, I also don't know if he's really good in training. At, at yeah. taking set pieces. I bet like, he is. I mean, he's a quality player, and we need to get the best out of balance and do anything. But the problem but is right now, we're never going to... It is so it is so slim in terms of situations that we're playing it through the middle to create an engineer a chance. He was even bad at that. I remember like one... Yeah. We had a really promising moment, and I think he tried to play it out to... Was it Palmer on the right? Yeah, it's reach and it was just abject. It was just it yeah. was just a curved ball straight into the centre back to the Preston left back, whoever it was. Yeah, but it's get it gets to the point. I suppose the thing is when Brown is not on the pitch for eighty one minutes, so as an option he's not there. Mm. But I thought we were like letting Palmer take some corners. I thought we'd maybe had a good corner or two from Adebayo before the break. Know. I, I, I don't know. No, I don't know. no concept. But, but I then we feel like we've typically had. But we've seen. I feel like me and you of Wednesdayites have seen a lot of this. We've seen a lot of different players come in and take a free kick into corner and be like, "Oh wow, that was you know yes. it might be you know someone bends a free kick just over the round the post or just over the bar and you think, oh that was pretty good. I mean you know he, he obviously didn't get on target, but I didn't know he could do that. Yes, you know because I've never seen that before. Like Windass. Windass managed to nearly bend one into a postage stamp. Yeah. I mean, we never got into a situation where we had an attacking free kick just outside the box to, and obviously Windass wasn't on the pitch anyway. Did you like Windass's audacious audacious effort from almost a halfway line? No, no, I didn't. I'm glad you brought it up because I remember they they talked about that. Like, uh, Pearson was like, oh, that was a good effort. And um, 
uh, what's his chops? Um, <laughs> football heaven guy who's one of the worst who's still there, Andy Giddings. <laughs> oh, yeah. G- Sorry. Yeah. Giddy Aidings uh, has uh, got giddy about it as well. And then, like, I'm like, I, I, I was like, I guess I don't have the benefit of seeing it without outside the camera angle. Because I, I didn't get to see the context of the fact the keeper was off his line. But also in yeah. retrospect, it was a bit like, you've made a really speculative effort from a situation where I felt we could have broken and probably maybe have done something. Because <laughs> Rich was, I think Rich was kind of on his left. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting. So they, they mentioned, so I think a lot of people were trying to scratch their head about the tactics and lineups coming into this. Yes. But everybody was baffled with the fact that Van, Ak- Van Aken was playing left back, but did did okay, I'd say. Did all right. Yeah, I actually, I, mu- I missed, I saw people talking on Twitter about an incident that he maybe could have got in trouble for, but I missed that. You missed that. Okay, because that's one of my last notes. I didn't make many notes for the second half. Apart from the other note, quickly, quick note want to give out here. Um, for a long ball side, we seem to spend a lot of time trying to uncomfortably play it out of the back. <laughs> There's a lot of us giving giving me kittens, you know, trying to possess the ball around the back before we just get it a bit further up the field to then hit it long, further up the field. Why don't you just do that at the beginning? So th- I mean, this is one of those games where our summer recruitment and maybe successive rounds of recruitment have left us in positions because you're looking at the you're looking at what we can put what we can bring on from the bench to make a difference and there's just there's so little that I know. is inspiring that because that's the thing i mean preston made changes and i think it did have an effect i think it took us a little while to adjust and their best period in the game was straight after half time when Gallagher was getting a lot of the ball and and really kind of dictating the play. But then, you know, bringing on someone like Gallagher, he's getting on in years, but he's still a very high quality player. Um, They then brought on Pearson from the bench and Maguire. Both of these guys are good, solid championship players. I I actually quite like Ben Pearson. He's a bit of an oik, but he's the sort of oik that if he's in your team, you you know, you're drawn to. Um, Yeah. And I just look at our bench and we're like, it's just so limited. Do you, um, do you like me, we're always baffled by the phrase, but maybe think about using it because we don't have a better kind of term saying he's a bad egg, but he's one of the ones you want pissing out. Oh, have yes. You, you want to, Yeah, you want him in the tent. Yeah, pissing out rather than... <laughs> oh, it's yeah. a tent. I didn't know a tent was involved. I just, yes. I yeah, just you thought want, an egg you want was pissing. In the tent. No, uh, that's that's kind of went with it. And I'm like eggs, <laughs> eggs piss, eggs excrete. <laughs> I don't know. It's very strange. Very strange. I I didn't know the origin of that term. You know, like like swings and roundabouts. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that's the thing. So we make these changes, and like Pelipesi. So that Pelipesi is markedly worse than Luongo. Uh, he's probably in the form of his Wednesday life at the moment, Pelle Pessi, but he's still about <laughs> half as good as Luongo on a bad day. Yeah. Uh, we take off Odebadjo, bring on Rhodes. I don't know what that was supposed to achieve. I don't know what Jordan Rhodes is supposed to do in a game where we have no foothold. But then again, I suppose, again, you're thinking if we can get the ball in the box, then maybe he's the guy to get on the end of it. Because um, mm. <laughs> you can't, plan for being so bad at set pieces that no Sheffield Wednesday player has a chance of getting on the end of them. That's uh, <laughs> Then you've got no hope in, in hell. Um, and then obviously Brown came on for Patterson, which again I thought was weird, but Patterson's been away with Scotland. He's um, he's been He was involved in, in a couple of the games. So, you know, again, looking after him and uh, knowing that he's going to have to do a very similar hard-working job midweek. Um, it's probably sensible to give him a, a bit of a rest. We literally have no other option than Patterson to do the job that he does. And I don't even know that he's very good at doing the job. But there you go. <laughs> Anything else to sort of round it up before we get into some player ratings? Um, we can do this. So the situation, just to talk about, so near the end, Van Aken was very lucky to not be sent off. Okay. I actually thought it was a sending off, to be honest, because right. basically he'd lost the ball the Preston player, whoever it was, was streaming in. Um, Van Aken took him out. Right. And I genuinely felt it was last man. And I thought, I'm like, I was there watching this and being like, he's gone. He's going. And the referee just gave me yellow. And right. okay. the commentator team, Giddy Aiding, seemed to say there was another player back. 
Okay. So it wouldn't have been the last man, but I, I thought it was a very professional foul to break up a situation where I thought Preston were going to go forward and score again. I don't have any faith in Westwood to do anything. I yeah. also thought there was a situation which Burner covered excellently for, where who was the Preston player who slipped it behind Westwood? Do you remember that? Oh, Did you yeah. see that? Yeah. And I also felt from that situation, I was like, that was worrying, Kieran. That was very worrying. You should have done something in that situation. Yeah. I don't think you made any effort to try and get the ball. And luckily for Julian Burner, of all people, you know, he's certainly, certainly not the prize associate of. He's not the Kaiser Sose of the Wednesday defense right now. He's definitely not the usual suspect. <laughs> uh, well, I think he's I think he's turned things around a fair amount, to be fair. He has. In this I mean, I, run of patchy form, he's been pretty mm, consistently very good for probably a month or more. Yeah, I'd agree. Play, player of the month for October. Big Jules with his big cheeser. <laughs> uh. So... 25% possession, it's not. It's pretty uh, grim reading, but they only had one shot on target, so... Mm. It felt like more, though. <laughs> it, it felt like... Uh, there was, they, like they, a climate they, change denier. You're definitely, you're, you're definitely um, f- under the influence of the Pulisibo effect. <laughs> the Pulisibo effect. Um, well, no, I'm lies, not lies, lies, and damn stuff. Yeah. But I mean, it it felt like the thing I didn't say after that goal. I mean, it's a great finish. It was a good finish. Really good finish from Buckers, and a lot of kudos to dig out a shot that impressive on the bounce on the turn. It was very impressive. He's a bit of a player, isn't he? He I is. Th- I think this he's is the thing out. that's really depressing. You were talking about Preston having all these, you know, seven foot nothing lump shit house players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who can out football quite a lot of teams? Yeah, they're a very good side. It's they are. It's a little bit depressing. Good for them. I thought, I thought Ledson, uh, several of their players looked looked really good today. I thought Ledson looked really good all game as well. Um, the only player I think for them who was garbage was Rice. I think he's awful. What yes. a terrible yeah. signing. They spent like a million and a half on him. They were really, the commentators were really excited about him. He's rubbish. I know. It's awful. Apparently he's quick. I didn't see that at all. But. I- I, I think I think they should have. I think Jack Marriott would have been a better player. For them. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Marriott, who you saw actually, sorry from the um, uh, the press and news, just to bring you on my level, Rich. Uh, Pulis says he's out for six to seven weeks of a calf injury. He's gone back to Derby. All right. I find it weird when lone we're players really, that we're parent really feel that, that injured. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You go. Sorry. I find it weird when lone players go back to their parent club when they're injured. Uh, yeah, I don't is, know. Maybe it's not part of the thing. part of the warranty. You know, if it's faulty, it comes back to. Uh, I don't. Maybe know. I'm, I, I I wonder how much is you know you want the assessment done by. Well, part of it we might well be in a situation we, where we pay one amount when he plays and one amount when he doesn't, and maybe they don't want us to you know write him off for six weeks when he's only injured for right. four i don't know i mean it might be a bit of that because so derby will decide when he's fit to play again essentially it feels a bit like something from child's play with like a chucky doll that needs to go back that's faulty and <laughs> something i don't know uh, what a bad signing not that people to play him but anyway but anyway should we do um Actually, there's one final comment I want to make okay. from a kind of okay. So I, I texted my oldest brother and said, you know, you'd probably be fortunate that um, I said, I think you should probably, he said, how, you know, how grim was it? I'm like, it was pretty grim. Mm. And then he was like, uh, I said to him, I think while Pulis is manager, you should save your iFollow money, you know, and, you know, while he's there. And he's like said, I kind of want to see how bad it is. <laughs> And then that made me think. I said, "You've given I, me, a, you've given me a joke for the podcast, and the <laughs> joke is, um, under Pulis with a Geely of, Sh- of Sheffield Wednesday for the teams." <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sure uh, you know my, um, you know, uh, school schoolboy like naivete is going to come back and bite me on the bomb, but I honestly don't think. If Pulis gets us playing anywhere near what he wants to do, I can't see how it will be worse than what we how we were playing under Monk. I can't like we it was dreadful. We weren't playing nice football. Mm. 
We were, it was the goalkeeper kicked it long every single time they got the ball. Like this has been interesting listening to opposition commentary because they're just saying, "Oh, long again, long again." Like we were a long ball team, we were just crap at it. Mm. And there were moments where we picked passes through the lines, and I think those were the better moments. But our m- way of operating under Monk, by and large, was just lumping it forward and doing it badly. So yeah. if we can do slightly better long ball, I, I I think it will be slightly better to watch. Weirdly, and that is it's it's it doesn't say anything good about Tony Pulis, but it, it says a lot about how bad we were under Monk. I don't know, but it's like it's one game. It's early doors. It's I don't know. It, well, I say this. I said it, it's got to get better, but I mean, it it could well genuinely not. This could genuinely be the peak of what it is. It could be even worse than it is today, which is still pretty poor. The thing I'm saying was though, it's like I I've said I've said to a couple of people today, maybe you. I said I miss Monk because I I miss having those moments of actually trying to play a little bit of football through the middle. I just I. I... I don't see the difference. Today, I don't see the difference. It felt like nothing had changed to me at all. I see the difference, and I think it's worse. I know. Well, I, I know it, you're I think saying it's more, that, I think it's more I, solid. I, I, the thing I was thinking at halftime was, you know, the really good thing about this would be is maybe this is something we'll look forward to. I mean, today was, I'm really hoping this is a blip in Pulis's kind of Wednesday career. If, like, hopefully it goes well. I I think you can't want to judge a team match. that uh, after 15 minutes we'd lost a player and probably probably our best player as as we as we stand mm-hmm. at this point in time or one of our you know one of our best two players this season. Uh, I I think it's very harsh to judge us on what happened after that, but I don't I do agree. What right. happened before that was rubbish. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> But I, I, I don't know. I just think it's hard to draw conclusions from this. But, but I, I just didn't. I don't see. I didn't see us playing much football under Monk. I saw us lumping it up to Patterson. <laughs> there wasn't. But it who was can't, more who can't more. do anything with it. Yeah. <laughs> Patterson's not mobile enough to cope with rubbish balls from out from the back. And it was interesting from the post match that uh, Pulis kind of sees. So I, I think it was more of a kind of four-five-one because I think Pulis kind of saw Patterson, Patterson being really dangerous coming from the middle, like breaking mm-hmm. forward, which is really interesting. Yeah, intriguing. That is that is that's something. That's something new. That's a bit of reinvention. <laughs> that's something. That's a little little fleck of glitter in amongst all the awful awful poo. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Obviously, so we've got we, you know we've got Swansea midweek. That's going to be a, a telling sort of game, sure. and the games are coming thick and fast. But I, I do. The thing I, I wanted to say. Sorry, yeah, can I just finish say this? Yeah. Was like the thing I thought at half time was the thing I'd really like. Uh, the thing that's going to be nice if, if this goes according to plan is it'd be really nice to frustrate other teams' fans. Like <laughs> yes. there's there's no physical fans in the stadium, so everything's always online. Everything's on the social media channels. I'd love to really piss off a series of Preston fans to be like, I wish we could have scored today. I'm really frustrated by today's game because if we go and we just frustrate teams, yeah, that would that would be something. That would be nice. It'd be nice to the people I follow not seeing bloody Alan Nixon people being like, what do you think of my betting slip, Alan? Uh, and everybody putting down whoever wins they are playing to win because it's, yeah, yeah. it's banker. It's a you bank. know, that would be nice. That would be that would be something. Yeah, you know. But again, we conceded. We conceded the goal, and we probably look like conceding more. I'm going to say that's why I said I'm surprised it was just one shot on target. I do think we 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 rode our luck a little bit from set pieces, but we, yeah, that that Preston team is so big that they you have to manage them quite cleverly. I think at set pieces, but they they had chances. They should have done better with some of their chances today. They did us on the counter quite a few times. And that too as well, yeah. Which I hope we can become a team like that. I was hoping that we would do them on the counter as well, but it, it didn't look like... But it looked better than it did on... It looked a lot better than it did on the Monk, but still has some way to go to, you know, yeah. materialise with the ball in the back of the back of the net. We have to stop this thing where we... It's been it's been so... It's almost like the throw-ins, you know. We've, we're always bad at throw-ins. It doesn't matter who the personnel on the pitch are it doesn't matter who's in mm. charge um 
and this th- there's been this thing that we I remember watching I suppose it happened to JJ as well but it, it stood out so much under Antonio that players don't go oh he's making a real effort to run with the ball what I should do now is support him what the players do is they stand and go oh look at him he's having a run it's good good on him and they don't move at all and like uh-huh. <laughs> that happens still so there was the moment where Windass like bro- like nicked the ball off a defender and like broke to the um broke to sort of almost the corner flag and then whipped a ball across and it was put exactly what Windass should do like he's not going to beat all those defenders it was a good ball it it, it would have favored an attacking player in that situation but nobody was even in the half with him they were all just stood watching him going all oh, right yeah. Oh, he's done an attack then. Well, well keep in shape, guys. Keep in shape. Yeah. <laughs> there needs to be so to, to do efficient counter attacking when there needs to be a little bit of risk. <laughs> you know, do you do you think in this slack. um in this reboot of Wednesday, like um, you know, there's Muppets and there's Muppet babies. Do you think this is Wednesday babies? And do you think the players like look at them and say he he he's done an attack like they would say I I done a poo. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's all actually. It's more treated with the disdain of Scrappy Doo in terms of reboots. <laughs> Look at this little prick. What's he doing? We've seen too many Scrappy Doos. <laughs> yeah. You know that's the problem. The Preston fans are holding their hand at arm's length on our mm-hmm. Scrappy Doo players' heads. <laughs> And they're all going, let, let me out. Them. Let, let me out. Me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we want to rate some bad performances? Let's do it. Bad performances. Let's do it. Chiron Westweird. Chiron Westworld. Um, um, Westwood, 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 Westwood TV. Tim Westwood. Westwood TV. Um, still proceeding. Wasn't, wasn't the jump off. Um, <laughs> You know, maybe if the rules keep changing of football and it becomes more of this North American sport, maybe one thing that could be good for Kieran Westwood is we could have like a special teams and he can go up and do his volleyball assist in the box <laughs> um, to maybe keep the ball alive and get it onto someone to uh, get Rita Johnson back or Rob Jones back to head it in. We'll get uh, Chris Lines back as a kicker. Uh, he can take the corners, you know, because kickers can uh, keep doing it forever, and all we'd ever yes. ask him to do just uh, float his balls in. Uh, there we go. That, what? Speaking of Chris Lyons, sorry, mm-hmm. that is people laughed about Chris Lyons. I don't understand why people laugh so much about Chris Lyons. But if if Bannon could do what Chris Lyons did, we would get so many more goals from set pieces. Just hang it up, put it in the same place every time. And lo and behold, the players will know where to stand and how to attack the ball because there's a consistency to it. When it comes like dribbling at the near post or boomed over everybody's head or it, it goes out of the box altogether or straight into the goal nearly, nobody mm. knows what the heck they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that was the, yeah, the beauty of Chris Lyons was, guess what? I'm going to hang it up on the six y- at the middle of the six-yard box and all you big lads can have at it. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, they filled their boots. Bring back Chris Lines. He's still playing, isn't he? Or is he just retired? I think he's just retired. Just retired. Anyway, um, Kieran, pa- uh, Kieran Palmer. Liam Palmer. Oh, we didn't give a rain for Westwood, did we? Oh, Are sorry. We no, there's we probably some more stuff to say about Westwood as well. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think the problem is football managers come in and... It's it's a what is it a tableau rosa a blank slate I think that's what mm. it's called okay um, the the idea being as a philosophical concept I think is that every child is born into the world it's a blank slate you know okay but yeah. it's a blank slate to them in terms of the players and it should be but also unfortunately the problem is a lot of these football managers I doubt Telly Pulis has seen much Wednesday in the past yeah two years apart from him playing against you know him managing against us from Millsborough. He's probably not seen the fact that Kieran Westwood is not the player he used to be. No, yeah. But would you not... 
I mean, I agree with his con. You know, I I can see his point of being like, look, you've got this player who's previously considered one of the best keepers in the championship. Yeah. You know why? You know, it's obviously on a stellar wedge. You know, training with the under twenty threes. Um, he probably knows and probably understands a little bit of something that three previous managers have said he is not good for this football club mm. in terms of being a personality of you know. And well, right now, it's a it, we talk we talked about him doing the you know doing what you do on the PR front. The, the easiest oh, PR yeah. win with the fans right now. He's done a brilliant is, job. Well, bring Westwood back is 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 a PR an easy. You know, it's an open goal, PR-wise. Sure. There's that's sort what, of nothing um, to lose because... That's what Bullen did after um, yeah. Lukai went, right? Yes, he did, yeah. But I think he's obviously gone backwards. When Bullen did it, he was clearly the best goalkeeper at the club by a distance, and it was weird that he was being kept out. Westwood lost his position on form. I, th- I still probably think he's the best goalkeeper at the club, but it's much more granular now. Like I think it, 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 this is very, um, <laughs> very unscientific. But like, if you think about like FIFA or, or you know, um, something where or, or, or Pro Evo, where a player is given an overall rating, mm. I would say Westwood was probably something like a seventy-five-ish, seventy-two maybe. Mm-hmm. He's dropped off massively, and I think he probably is the best goalkeeper at the club still, but it's yeah. more like he's a 65 and mm-hmm. Dawson's a 62 and Wild Smith is a 63. Something I was like going to say 63. Oh. <laughs> oh, buddy. You and me. <laughs> but, like, the, he maybe is marginally better, but he... But it is very small margins, and none. The fact is, none of them are good enough now. Speaking of margins and margin margin arenes, um, <laughs> would you would you say you, you 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 can believe he's not better, or you can't believe he's not better? <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can believe he is better. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to welcome to different gravy, the, the pr- <laughs> premier Wednesday podcast for butchering the English language. <laughs> I think that like uh, Pulis has very much made a stand. Hilariously, you know, he wasn't in the twenty-five man. I I'm confused about this. So does the EFL have a you can only have twenty-five professionals within a squad? Is that the mentality? I and then so. everyone else is like under me. classed as under twenty threes. Is that the? Yeah. Right. But I wonder if we've got 25 senior pros. We seem to have a lot less these days, don't we? When you think that people like like Delhi Bashiru will be an under 23s, obviously Shaw and Hunt. I don't know about Penny's still like 21, 22, is he? Probably. He was yeah. on the bench. Yeah, he was on the bench today. Yeah, but I, 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 don't, the nine. I just don't think we've got a squad that's that big probably not probably not so you probably can do that you brought him in so he's, he takes number one because the number one spot was vacated yeah because it well because it was his <laughs> because it's place. yes um and you haven't named a new number one so i think we'll probably pulis will stick with westwood i i, I, ho- I wonder I hope whether we... there's less rotation on the pulis i feel that we'll probably just be giving players minutes and chances even if they drop huge bollocks such a such a kind of picture of Pulis and all the decisions he makes it's amazing um I think so I I think when you look at what he's done with Westwood so first off it's a PR win you know so somebody sensible at the club might well have said you know Westwood kind of had this falling out with Monk but he's he's still you know still fit and able to do the job and the fans are sort of don't know why he's not getting picked so picking him would be a would be a win so if he doesn't know anything he might just look at the situation and go why on earth have you not got this guy who's got all this experience and whatever playing um 
if he's if he's had somebody's had a word in his ear again that sort of feeds into that but i suppose even if you've got the plan to get a good goalkeeper in january and we were linked with a keeper on loan in january so it might be that something is lined up in that regard we don't know how much say pulis is going to have over mm. transfers um and it's probably also pretty fair for him to have a good idea. He's going to have a lot of games from now until January. Yeah. So but I get a what, good concept of who these players are. Yeah. But I suppose Dawson's like, you can get, well, he's had all his chances, I think. You could argue it's a bit unfair on Wildsmith because he had two. It is unfair on Wildsmith. Up. I know. Um, but I, I think there's a PR win. And I think even if you're planning to get rid of, or not get rid of, but like replace all of the existing goalkeepers with another first choice keeper in January, the, what you need to do is have something that works between now and January. And you, what you've got is Westwood with a point to prove coming back into the side. You get a win with the fans who are a bit skeptical about you coming in. I just think there's, there's no real downside. And I do still think he's probably is the best goalkeeper at the club. It's just, that still doesn't make him a good enough goalkeeper. <laughs> I really well. liked your FIFA analysis um, <laughs> of them. I'd really like to. I've only played a little bit of this, so I, I don't quite know how it goes. But is there kind of like a trade mixer that you have in FIFA in like Ultimate Team where you can feed the players in and trade them in for a random new player? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I, yeah, I would like that as well. That would be good. I'd like that. I'd like to see if even if it's some... Um, all three um, together equal. Some reserve left back at Fort Bournemouth comes out. I'd even be happy with that, to be honest with you. I don't know. Even if Royce Wiggins comes back from the uh, comes back from the dead. Just, just, just. Uh, how many awful goalkeepers we have under contracts as club oh, for a long time? It's really, really poor. Let's give him a score. Let's get. We need to. Move oh, on. we need to give him a score, don't we? Five point five. Yeah. Fair um, I don't think his kicking's got any better, by the way, but we don't need to go into that. Um, <laughs> he's not been practicing that in his uh, sabbatical. Liam Palmer. Mm, Liam Palmer, Liam Palmer, Liam Palmer, Liam uh, Palmer. Let's give him a six. He was okay. I don't... This is I such the... exposed a couple of times, but he wasn't at fault for the goal, and that sort of means that he did all right, I guess. Mm. <laughs> um, Tom Lees. I'm going to go for a six for Tom Lees. I thought he was all right. Was Bannon still the captain today? He was still the captain, yes. I okay. saw him, uh, um, I saw him uh, adjusting his captain armband after he was uh, remonstrating with the referee over a throw-in that we didn't get. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just wondered. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought Tom Lees did, uh, did okay. I think um, one, of his, mm-hmm. one of his better performances. Uh, Burner. Give a seven to Burner. I think it was a pretty decent performance. I think we need to give severe kudos for that chance, which he completely yeah, saved us for. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's the big positive. I think if you're looking at a man and match for Wednesday in his team, you're looking at Julian Berner. I, I, I tend to agree. Um, left back Van Aken. Van Aken was fine at left back. I thought he was okay. Um, I can't believe. Outside. Can't believe. Yeah, he should have gone. Uh, but maybe that's a giant stroke of good work that, mm. you know, he didn't get a, horrendous sending off for doing something like that you know yeah his um his his sending off a few weeks ago was pretty harsh i thought yes so maybe maybe it's a kind of karmic (laughs) you know comeback for him he was Uh, one of the four alongside tom lees wasn't he who was sent off yes yeah and then obviously kadeem harris and today yeah uh, windass trumpy bomb trumpy bomb um Moses Adebayo, or go with where we'll they start. Six. I mean, it, it's weird with Adebayo. I mean, he looks like he um, maybe it's better for him to be up further up the field because we don't want to see him. At, I thought he was okay at wing back. Mm. I quite liked him at wing back. I, he had a moment where I thought he was okay at the part of the free centre back. We're never going to see a free centre back on the Pulis. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's really. It is but... nice to go back to a four at the back. Yeah, and look like we have a bit of solidity about us. It just, if you're gonna have an extra player somewhere, it's just such a boring place to put them at the back. I know, I know it's because he couldn't get a two to work ever, Monk. But yeah, you want you'd rather have an extra man in midfield or an extra man up front than an extra man at the back. Surely, like that's the least 
exciting place for the extra man to be. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so interestingly, the the on who scored they've got Patterson next. So yeah, because Patterson in the middle. I think they went with a four five one. I saw it on Flash yeah. as well. So Patterson was okay. Um, I don't know how much Windass going kind of disrupted anything we looked to get from Patterson. I don't know. I, I don't know what. Yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued by Pewis talking about him and his position and what he does. I suppose he kind of had been dropped a little bit deeper because the last game or two, Monk was trying to play Kachunga and Windass off of Patterson in, the se- in a similar sort of way. Like, Patterson was the deeper of the almost a kind of false nine type position. I, swear, I think he was further back than that today. But, I don't, you know, if that's your, like, revolutionary new idea is that the target man stands a little bit closer to the midfielders, it's not particularly inspiring. Mm. <laughs> I, I Granted, we don't have many options. Um, no, it's so interesting. Six, maybe? Or, yeah, six is yeah. fine. Uh, action mass, mass more longer. He was good. Um, let's go over six as well. I think that's probably right. fair because I mean he had like those moments kind of breaking forward. That's the yeah. thing is just, he's such quality and he's got a good engine on him and you know he's not he he is still quick you know and he has those moments where he can get forward and do something really quality. Yeah, it's just such a shame because it's a I, we need one of him everywhere really. Yeah, yeah, and as we keep, we keep saying, I mean, it was the theme last season. It's the theme this season. The more he's fit, the better Sheffield Wednesday will have a better chance we'll have of winning games. Yeah, the, the, the keeping him fit, keeping him on the pitch, having him start games is vital. He's so good. He's kind of the heartbeat of things. Um, Barry Bannon. Barry Bannon. Uh, I'm going to give him a five because his set pieces Oof. were absolutely woeful. Oof. It's harsh but fair. He, he didn't do anything else though. No. Like, we need him to do... That's it, because it's not going to go through him the rest of the time. It's just going to go over his over his wee head, um, <laughs> hurtling up towards whoever's up front. Um, it's, it is t- it's telling. I think, again, this season, it's been telling from him that we've maybe relied on him more than ever. We need his quality. We need him to produce in key moments to, to win us games and affect games. And he... He's failing almost uniformly um, <laughs> at what he's asked to do. So if it's playing that key pass, it's just he's not hitting those passes. If it's occasionally taking a shot, he's no better at that than he's ever been. Um, and more often than not, it's set pieces. When you're a team that doesn't create many chances, your set pieces are your absolute lifeblood. And we don't have a guy that's taking good set pieces right now, but he takes all of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. No. Uh, Adam Reach? Reach was okay. Maybe we can give him a six. Fair enough. Maybe. I don't... He's okay. Yeah. Is it worth giving a score to Trumpy Bum? A three. <laughs> yeah, let's give him a three. <laughs> um, Pelle Pessi? Played half an hour or so. Um, let's give him a six. Jordan Rhodes? 5.5, maybe. Yeah. I don't... I literally don't remember him doing anything. I don't remember him doing anything. You know, I remember him coming on, and that was about it. I don't remember him yeah. touching the ball in the slightest. Isaiah Brown. Maybe even give him a six just because of that corner. I talk that was quite yeah. good. Yeah. I don't know. Do, do, do you think of... it's weird that we've come in and we've said luongo has been out for feels like feels like most of the season <laughs> so far? You know. Yeah. And um, and then Izzy Brown was coming back and then getting some more minutes, and then Luongo starts. Maybe, yeah. Plays, I mean, plays don't know more minutes the, than Brown did. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with Izzy Brown because he's he's been per, pretty much injured the whole time he's been with us, hasn't he? Apart from you know, start had a bright start and then just been injured the whole time. Yeah, I don't. You don't know. He might have had a setback. He might have, or maybe just it didn't suit the formation. Luan goes the, the only good. Um, the the only good defensive midfielder we've got. So if we wanted to play one of those, he's the only option in that position. Mm. Okay, well there we go. <laughs> a joyous episode. What a joyous season. What a wonderful team. It's a good sport. People like it. Um, we, we've got we've got Swansea midweek. We're on that the telly box, and uh, and then we've got Stoke, the Pulis Derby. 
You looking forward to the week ahead? Uh, not particularly. No. <laughs> um, the thing that was nice I was, I mean, I guess around us, Forest a lot. Well, Forest are a bit more ahead of us. Derby lost. Wickham drew. Mm. I feel like someone else lost around us. Oh, Coventry picked up a point. Uh, Birmingham, Birmingham's hilariously the only away game at their ground. Oh, right. Because, you know, the, the ground sharing with Coventry right now. Of course. At St. Andrew. That's weird. They said the um, the golf course is big enough for the both of us. <laughs> hey. and, and none of us have to leave, to paraphrase Sparks. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, looking around us, you know, it's still, we're still in the thick of it, thanks to some, you know, an inexplicable win against Bournemouth. The good things we got from Gary Monk. And... Uh, Nick DeMarco doing the business in the courtroom. Yeah, he's he's um, player of the season thus far. Mm-hmm. Just like last season, Lucas Shaw was the far player of the season. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Do you like um, Nick DeMarco's sort of um, stringy indie music that he makes as well? I do. He smokes a lot. He smokes a lot, though, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right. I think that's more than enough on today's effort. <laughs> Um, I think we should allow people to get back to their lives and think about other things that aren't Sheffield Wednesday. Yes. Um, This podcast may well end up having to become, you know, the Scrabble podcast or darts or something. We'll have to follow some other sporting endeavor if, uh, if, if we continue down this particular rabbit hole of just more and more dour performances after one after another. But, uh, you know, for this week, I will, I will wish you well. I will say um, cheerio to the people at home and cheerio to you, Luke. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Goodbye, everybody at home, and goodbye, Rich. Listening and good luck.